In this video, I want to share with you some of the most important lessons I learned from co-creating an online course working completely remotely. That's what's coming up in this video. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you do more work that makes you proud by designing and delivering services that are good for people and business. And this is a little bit different video than you're probably used to on this channel because it's not about service design per se, although I think there are a lot of lessons for any service designer, but it's much more about the insights that I got from co-creating an online course working completely remotely. By the way, if this is your first time here on this channel, welcome and consider subscribing as we bring new videos that help to level up your service design skills at least once a week. So before we dive into the lessons, I'll give you a little bit of background about this course. Because this is the second course I released, uh, it was about at the end of 2018, and it's a course on journey mapping, customer journey mapping, and it's a course designed to help people create better maps faster. And that the idea for that course started uh, way before that when I was interviewing Daniel Yewerman uh, as a guest on the show. And Daniel was uh, back then working, uh, he was a CEO of Transformator Design, one of, the, one of the leading Scandinavian service design agencies. Uh, and at that time, Daniel was also working on an online tool called Costalance which is basically the way I described it back then. It's like a Google Docs for customer journey mapping. And anyone that has created journey maps know that as soon as you start to sort of get into more advanced stuff, as soon as you go beyond the post-its um, and you try to digitize stuff, you try to collaborate with people outside of a workshop, you run into all sorts of challenges um, that nobody has really solved in a good way. And I saw uh, that Custolance was might be uh, a tool that could really aid, help anyone who is really serious about journey mapping and wants to take it to the next level, uh, that it could help to make the process much more efficient and be much more impactful. So Daniel and I continued talking about this. And um, at some point we realized that uh, a lot of people before they can start using a tool like Costalance or when they start using a tool like Costalance, they also actually need to understand what it means to create a good journey map. And that knowledge was sort of lacking in a lot of cases. Still people were not getting the most value out of their times and efforts that they put into customer journey mapping. So we decided to combine our knowledge and uh, create a course that I think is currently the most helpful course on journey mapping because we've combined, I think, uh, the experience from over doing 200 projects on journey mapping and all the mistakes that we made. And we combine that into a compact course. Now, let me give you a little bit of background about, well, not the background, let me give you the most important learnings that we uh, learned through this process. So like I said, this is the second course that I launched, the first course um, I created all by myself, that, and that's a course on selling service design with confidence. You can also check out the course down below in the show notes if you're interested in that. But this was the second course and this course was unique in the way that it was co-created fully with Daniel. And one of the first things that we learned uh, really quickly is that you have to spend a good amount of time defining who you're creating the course for. It makes a lot of sense. And that also applies when you're doing uh, creating a course uh, by yourself. But when you're doing something together and you have to work collaboratively, uh, Daniel was all the time in Stockholm. I was back here in Utrecht and we were working through Google Docs, Trello video calls. We, we quickly realized that we needed to spend quite a fair amount of time in actually really carefully describing who is it that we're targeting with the course? Who, what is, who is the ideal 
student because we quickly saw that a topic like journey mapping, um, you can do a lot of stuff. It, the danger of sharing too much and uh, wanting to teach too much is uh, immediately around the corner. The first time we uh, brainstormed about some of the topics we could be teaching, like the list was never ending, was huge list. And then we then we started to compile, like, I don't know, you can call it a persona, you can call it a customer avatar, whatever you want to call it. We, we started to define the profile of our uh, ideal student. And we, uh, we went and validated sort of the, our assumptions about that ideal student through a series of webinars. So we hosted uh, a few webinars about journey mapping and we asked the people who were in those webinars, you know, what are the things you really struggle with? What would you like to learn about? And based on that feedback, we even we, we narrowed down uh, our ideal student even further. And this, this document, this customer avatar, uh, was super, super, super important later on in the project because we went back to this document a lot of the time to think about when we needed to decide if we wanted to include something or not. Um, this was sort of our compass. This was our guiding guiding line, Northern Star, that we could decide, are we going to include this or not? So maybe this wasn't even about what should we include in the course. It was much rather this shouldn't be in the course because. Uh, so the, the first big lesson, always know who you're designing for, but especially when you're doing it remotely and with two people, spend a good, um, a fair amount of time up front in the beginning, thinking about understanding your ideal student and validating that. That helped, that saved us so much time in the end. So that's the first big lesson. The second thing we learned pretty quickly is that we have to be mindful about the uh, lecture format, the course format that we were going to choose. Now, my previous course, uh, it was me talking and using slides um, and, and uh, yeah, explaining what is in the, in the lesson, explaining the lesson in really short bite-sized videos. But uh, we, we could have gone for that style here as well. So like Daniel could do a lesson, I could do a lesson and then basically separate uh, each other. Uh, but we felt that that wouldn't add the most value as we really tried to create a course where, where, where we were not only teaching the process of creating a good journey map, but we were also really uh, concerned about sharing our mindset, sharing our deliberations and helping people to understand how to make decisions um, through the process. So not just showing the steps. So we had to figure out, okay, we have two people. How are we going to create a format that is engaging and fun to watch, but also uh, educational? So we went, opted in for much more conversational style of lessons where I took the role of being like the client or the person who wanted wants to create a journey map in my organization. And Daniel was like the mentor, the coach, the external consultant who was guiding me through that process. And we were, th that format allowed us uh, a lot of room to actually have those conversations, but also be, uh, use our strengths. Like, I was asking the tough questions uh, because I was the client. I could be critical, and Daniel was um, could be in the role of the expert and really explain it in detail why I needed to do stuff, how I needed to do stuff. So I think that in the end combined really well into a format that is hopefully uh, fun to watch as well. So that's the second lesson that we really learned. Think about if you're going to co-create a course, how are the two or more persons going to interact with each other and how is that going to create value for the students in the course? Now, the third lesson relates to the previous one. And this one is about that, that you don't need to script everything out. Actually, you shouldn't script everything out um, in, in, in the course, in the lessons. 
in my in the in the previous course on the selling service design with confidence course i literally uh had scripted every word that i was going to say in a lesson and the reason why i did it back there was that i really wanted to keep the videos short compact and like every uh non-essential word was stripped out of the uh the script in this course we wanted, like I said, to have a much more conversational style. Um, and when we tried to script it, we became like human robots. All the authenticity went away and that didn't provide the learning experience that we were looking for. So eventually we ended up with just highlighting in bullets the key takeaways that we wanted to share in a lesson. And we just started a conversation about those, um, knowing that if we just have the conversation, we will be able to explain those key takeaways anyway. So that required some improvisation and thinking on your feet while we were doing that. But I think in the end, it created for a much more natural and much more interesting format to watch. So the second lesson we learned when co-creating a course like we did here, is don't script out anything, just know the key takeaways and then trust your instinct, trust that your experience will allow you to say the right things at the right time. And I think it worked well, it worked out pretty well in, in this format. Lesson number four that we learned, and that might surprise you, is that the tech part, the technology part, isn't actually that hard to achieve. Uh, especially, uh, we had some minor issues to actually do the recordings, the course recordings when we got to that point, but they were pretty quickly sorted out. Um, and the trick that we used was um, both of us were recording locally um, the video and we were having a Skype conversation, but we were both recording locally and then we would, in post-production, sync the videos to have the best audio and video quality um, and that worked out pretty well. The internet uh, didn't play a big role uh, in this. Uh, we used some additional tools like screen flick to do when we were doing screen recordings, when we needed to show things in Costellance. Um, and uh, that's, that's a really good tool that you can also find down below in the show notes. But basically that was it. The tech was quite easy. The, the, maybe the most important part regarding tech is make sure you have similar quality uh, uh, stuff, like similar quality camera, similar quality microphone, that just makes for a much more consistent experience for the students. Uh, but but th that just means buying the same equipment. Uh, that doesn't have to be a large investment. And I think if I had to think about tech, that would be my biggest tip. Make sure you have the similar tech equipment uh, and the recording part, well, that just works nowadays. It's not that hard. Lesson number five, the final lesson is, I think maybe the most important one and the thing that we underestimated the most upfront, at least I did, um, and that is actually finding the time to do, to create this because it took us about nine months um, between the moment that we thought, okay, let's do this till the moment that we uh, made the course public. Um, and that, that primarily was caused by the fact that we just had to do it in between or next to the things we are already doing on a day. Uh, we, we were both uh, running a company. So the amount of time that you can put into it is limited. So you have to juggle all the time with agendas and you it's almost impossible to block a few days to actually sit down and do the course and even if you would be able to sit down for a few days to to do the course the we found that the amount of energy you have in actually doing the recording uh, sitting in front of the camera thinking about it is like do, two hours recording of lessons is like the max i, I would say even 90 minutes to an hour is ideal. After that, your energy levels drop so much that the quality of what you're going to share uh, is also going down and that's not what you want. So we needed to work in small snippets uh, of time blocks. And if you spread those snippets out over multiple days, then 
you know, the, the, the time it takes to actually get to the next stage um, starts to count, which is not a bad thing per se. I don't know if there would be a better way to actually do it, maybe to block time uh, upfront, like every day for one and a half hour. But I, I think this was the, the, the best we could do. And that's for me the biggest learning. If I would have to do uh, another co-created course again, which I'm definitely thinking about, it would be to have a more rigid production schedule, knowing that the, keeping in mind the energy and also that you need to do other stuff besides this. So if you're curious about the results, how the course eventually ended up and you want to create better customer journey maps faster and with more confidence, you can find the course over here. If this is your first time here on this channel, don't forget to subscribe because we bring more videos that help to level up your service design skills at least once a week. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to see you in the next video.